don't make too many plans. Do what you like. Because if you do what you like, it will be easier to do it. You will do it better and you will win. That's a great start for today. Uh, <laughs> although some of you, you should make plans. Uh, we'll talk about that. When I was uh, three years old, three years old, I remember the sound, a sound that I like it very much because it is a powerful sound which uh, filled all the underground shelter where I was with my family, with the neighbors. And it was the sound of hundreds of bombers which were bombing my town. But I was a child and uh, I did not realize that this beautiful sound was the, the origin of the fact that when uh, we get, got out of the shelter, some of the buildings were not existing, no longer existing. And many persons were killed in every bombing. Uh, when uh, we consider that uh, the European Union is unsatisfactory, uh, we should not forget that it has given to us, to Europe, more than 70 years of peace. While war was outside Europe continuously, Kosovo, uh, Ukraine, uh, not to mention Middle East, North Africa, and, and so on. We should complete the European construction. And to complete it, uh, we have to take uh, the most difficult problems that have remained outside. That is political union, fiscal solidarity, and, and so on. Of course, this, this is difficult, but it's better than war and is better also of the possibility of Europe becoming uh, insignificant. The European Union has made of Europe the richest market in the world. But the absence of political union has made it very weak politically. And this, uh, in the next decades, will become uh, a terrific problem for Europe. Brexit will be a tragedy for continental Europe because Britain has always brought into the European construction the, the liberal attitude that uh, is proper of this uh, important fundamental country. And it will be a terrible loss for Europe if Britain will be outside. In our view, an activity is not sustainable in the long term if it is not compliant with on one side, the conservation of the environment. So that is why, for instance, we have invested in activities, uh, renewable energies, uh, and, and so on. And on the other side, an activity is not sustainable if there is too social sufferance. So, uh, we think, I think, that when uh, we make activities uh, to ease the social sufferance, or when we invest in activities that are sustainable for the environment, we are doing something that will be durable, that uh, we, we, we make activities that uh, Will not, be to, will not have to be abandoned in a few years. So, of, of course, not what could be considered socially desirable can be acceptable under these conditions. Well, I, I think that uh, for the banks, uh, the future is uh, in uh, confidence and trust. Uh, because we have to offer to our customer uh, 
a, a service which is easy and uh, which is uh, simple uh, and also cheap. And technology can offer all this. And uh, fintech, but also social network, can offer the same service uh, with a cost lower than the one that at present the bank support. Uh, but even if the, the cost is lower, they do not need to receive any price because they don't need to receive a few cents for a service when they get the information. And the information is more valuable than the few cents. So they can do the service for free. But of course, when uh, the price is uh, zero, the, the real merchandise which is on sale is you, your person, uh, your data, what, what you are doing, what you can do. So uh, the banks should offer the same service or if they are unable, should collaborate. But when protection, when savings, when the construction of a pension for the future is involved, uh, nobody should accept that uh, these uh, very delicate questions can be submitted to a social network or to a fintech uh, that uses the data for different aims. So I think that uh, the banks uh, should go in that direction. 